What's up guys, Lightwater here, and today we'll be looking over Holy Paladin. Uh, this is going to be another one of the videos in the series where we break down everything about the healer, and we figure out how to raid heal with them. So, without further ado, go ahead and open up the page about Holy Paladin. Wrong page again. Alright, here we go. So, we're going to go down all the spells here, and we'll get a good idea of what the Holy Paladin is going to be like, and a 6 minute fight for raid healing. So they have Judgment. Now Judgment will heal if we take this talent, but we'll, we'll move on for now. Alright, Flash of Light. Okay, one thing you should note before, before we get started. All these base mana values are wrong, because uh, they, are, they are going off the base mana of a Ret Paladin. So go ahead and, if you can, mentally divide the 22 by 5. So essentially all of these numbers need to be divided by 5, because the Holy Paladin obviously has a very large mana pool compared to a Ret. So, Flash of Light. Actually, I will pull up the uh, the list over here so I can read them off as we go. Okay. Here we go. So, Flash of Light. So, its actual mana cost is 4.4%, and it heals a friendly target for 125% spell power. Um, holy shock. One of the bread and butters of Paladin. 2% mana cost, and it's going to heal somebody for 150%. Uh, and it has an additional 30% critical strike chance. Now, if any of you guys have played Holy Paladin before, you would remember that Holy Shock used to just have double your critical strike chance. Now it just has a flat 30% increased critical strike chance. I actually like that better. That means that your breakaway points are a lot different now, right? It used to be that you had uh, your crit breakaway points were like so low and it was difficult to figure out. This Holy Shock would just double it. But the Holy Shock just has a flat 30%. Makes math a lot more easy. Uh, okay, Beacon of Light, classic, hasn't changed. Uh, put it on somebody and it heals them for 40% of all healing you do. Pretty simple. Uh, costs 2.5% base mana, so you don't want to be swapping it around a lot. You just put it on a tank and you leave it. Uh, Holy Light, the actual mana cost of this is 2.6%, and it heals a friendly target for 140. It takes 2.5 seconds to cast, so it's a bit more of a slower heal, but it's a little more efficient. Uh, Crusader Strike, that's not a heal. Um... There, there's the pass. Okay, so you have this passive called Infusion of Light. Every time your Holy Shock criticals, uh, essentially, the next Holy Light you cast is reduced by 1.5 seconds, or the healing is increased by your next Flash of Light by 40%. Um, that is a big part of the Paladin Kit. It's one of your very few passives. All right, Light of Dawn. My favorite spell, honestly, in healing in the game. Uh, the true value, uh, or the true mana cost of this is 2.8%, and it heals five injured allies in a frontal cone in front of you, 15 yard frontal cone, for 55% of spell power. Alright, moving right along. Light of the Martyr. I don't know how much this is going to get used this expansion, but the, the actual mana cost of this is 1.4%. Um, and it sacrifices, uh, well, I'll get to that point. It heals for 135% spell power, but you take damage equal to 50% of it. So, yeah, it hurts you. But it's a decent instant heal. It's instant, if I didn't mention that. Um, okay, yeah, here's another passive. If you cast Flash of Light or Holy Light on, the, on your Beacon of Light target, you'll be refunded for 25% of the mana cost. Again, this, or well, this isn't really worth it, because Beacon heals for 40%, but this only reduces the mana cost by 25%. So the only time you'd ever want to be hard casting on your Beacon of Light target is if there's absolutely nothing else to heal, and you'll be refunded 25% of the mana cost. It's kind of like... Um, you know, participation trophy, but it doesn't really feel that good. All right, you have your Blessing of Sacrifice. Um, you put it on a Ray member, they take a lot less damage. You start taking the damage instead. You notice there's a lot, there's a sacrifice theme going on here. You sacrifice your health to save another Raid member. Uh, that's kind of the theme that they're pushing on the Holy Paladin. This Righteousness, this 15% bonus to maximum health, was removed. You do not have this in the, uh, the pre-patch. Um, not sure. Res. Okay, aura mastery. This is where it gets interesting. So over here are your auras. Um, this one prevents damage to the raid. This one, essentially, and remember the sacrifice theme. They raid takes this damage, but you take it instead, kind of idea. And aura of mercy is a heal, passively just heals people around you. Because I'm a pad lord and uh, I'm, you know, a parse lord, I'm going to go aura of mercy because it's a heal. And essentially, when you use aura of mastery. The range is goes to 40 yards instead of, um, what is it, 10? And it heals for 100%. So it's going to essentially be like a really ghetto trank. But uh, yeah, it's not too bad. It, you can definitely use this to counter certain raid mechanics. 
All right, the Paladin's Mastery. You do more healing the closer you are to a target, um, which is pretty good. Uh, that's going to affect certain spells differently. Like, you know, Light of Dawn, which is a frontal cone right in front of you, is going to get the full amount. But if you're using your single target spells from far away, it's not going to work as well. Avenging Wrath, a.k.a. Wings. Uh, that is the wrong one. It's this one. So, increases your healing and critical strike chance by 30% for 20 seconds. Now, that's huge. Um, because it's, it's two different things, they actually multiply against each other. So, a bit difficult to explain. But the cooldown is honestly worth more like 69% increased healing. Yeah, I know, 69. All right. And I believe, oh yeah, as a last passive, uh, the damage you take from Blessing and Sacrifice is reduced by 25%. Whoop you fucking do. All right, so what do all those spells mean? Well, I have the base values and everything written over here already for you. So I also did the talents too. Uh, so we can go through some of the talents, uh, at least the spells for now. There's a Blessing of Faith heal. I wrote that down there. Light's Hammer right there. Um, Judgment of Light and Holy Prism. I have them all written down here. How much to heal for, how much mana they cost, and their coefficient over here. So we'll go through these one by one. Uh, Flash Shield's efficiency is 28. Holy Shock's efficiency is 75. Holy Light's efficiency is 53. Light of Dawn's efficiency is 98. Light of the Martyr's efficiency, after you factor in the 50% that it costs of your health, is 48. Um, and then... Bestow Face, 125, Light's Hammer, 93, Judgment of Light, 208, and Holy Prism at 73. So, now we haven't taken any talents at this point still. So this is where it gets a, a bit fun. This was actually one of the hardest classes for me to theorycraft. There was a lot of math. And it's because these talents start to get very fun, and we'll go over them one by one. Actually, we're going to work our way backwards, because that's pretty much how this, cl this class is based off of. So... Everything has to do with what 100 talent you take, okay? Uh, Divine Purpose gives your Holy Shock and your Light of Dawn a 20% chance to not trigger their cooldown and make the next spell cast free. Now, worth noting that this can proc off procs. So, that means that your free Light of Dawn could cause you to get another free Light of Dawn, which could cause you to get another free Light of Dawn. And yes, I've actually gotten five Light of Dawns before in a row, and it felt pretty cool. Um, also, you know, Holy Shock too, right? And since those are pretty much your bread and butter, because we know the efficiencies over here, right? We know that Light of Dawn is 98 compared to, like, 28 of Flash Shield, right? Or, like, 53 of Holy Light. Like, they're just so much better, and they, they cost, like, like, like the same mana, but they heal twice as much. Um, so you're obviously trying to use Light of Dawn and uh, Holy Shock way more often. Um, and so this is a pretty solid talent to take. Uh, Beacon of Faith gives you two beacons, but they're at 30% reduction. Uh, so what that actually means is since Beacon is 40% typically, 30% uh, of 40 is, I believe, 12. Yes. And so what you really get is two beacons, but at 28% strength. Um, so this, this it's okay, and, and that's out to be obviously more than just 40%. You get, uh, I think it's um, 56%. Yeah. So it's a 16% increase, essentially, uh, which isn't bad, but I'll get into that in a bit. And then Beacon of Virtue costs mana. It's a 15-second cooldown. It replaces your Beacon of Light, uh, and it essentially puts up four beacons, but only for eight seconds. Um, man, did it take a lot of math to figure out which one of these three is better. And yeah, I, I did do it. It was rough. Um, essentially... There's so many things you have to factor in. So a beacon of virtue, it is a it is on the GCD, right? So it does take a it does take a global cooldown to cast, which means that you, the duration is not really eight seconds. It's more like six point five, which really nerfed how good it is. Um, also, it replaces your beacon, which is rough because you know forty percent of your healing is just gone now. Um, beacon of faith was pretty good, but again, it, it reduces how effective your beacons are in the first place. Um, so it was it was pretty difficult, but and I don't think I'll be able to go into all the math here, but essentially Divine Purpose was the clear winner. Clear winner. Um these other ones are probably better for five men's, but we're talking about just pure efficiency with raid healing. Divine purpose is the clear winner. Um now this next row was a lot of fun. We got this new talent called Awakening. 
Um, Light of Dawn has a 15% chance to grant Avenging Wrath for 10 seconds, which is her wings. With these two combined, it is insane. The uptime on your wings is nutty. But we'll talk about these other ones. Um, so the problem with Avenging Crusade is you'll see the mana cost. Now, obviously, that's not it's not actually 50% of your base mana. It's 10%. But 10% of your base mana is so much to be using every two minutes just for a cooldown. Uh, and ultimately, it just kind of pays for itself but doesn't really increase your hbs and yeah i did do the math for this and it was cancer and essentially it it comes that you you break even which is not that's not what you want from a talent you don't want to break even you want to do you want it to give you more healing and so what would you rather have um essentially if you take awakening you have like a 40 percent uptime on wings so and this get this replaces avenging wrath so this replaces your ability to even have wings and it gives you these other wings which turns you into this sort of like melee healer. Uh, I think it'll, it's, it'll be really fun for cheesing the five men's, but for raid, it has no purpose. It doesn't increase your healing at all, really. Sanctified Wrath, your Avenging Wrath lasts longer, and Holy Shock's cooldown is reduced by 50% for the duration. Um, this one worked out, but it wasn't, it wasn't the greatest. Um, but it was all right. Let me see. I have all of the things over here. All right, let's put these off to the side. So I went through all of these talents down here, and I have all of the math listed, and I'll probably put the uh, the notepad in the description. But yeah, Sanctified Wrath, um, it's about a 4.1% HPS increase. Um, it's all right, but the Awakening is insane. Awakening was it gives you it, it averages out to be about 8% bonus crit and 8% increased healing. It's like a 16% HPS increase. It's it's just nutty. It's just nutty. So that's going to be our talent that we take for this row. Um, for this row, there was a lot more play. Essentially, Holy Prism sucks. Uh, it's just not mana efficient compared to what you can cast to your other uh, other stuff. So you have Judgment of Light, which was fairly efficient and a decent spell that you can spam all the time. Um, and it makes it to where you judge the boss and essentially all your raid members slowly heal up. And you, you just keep judging the boss on cooldown. Holy Avenger is a cooldown, though, that increases your haste and Holy Shock healing by 30% for 20 seconds. Uh, I go back and forth on these. This is the dealer's choice. Feel free to pick the one you want. I typically side with Holy Avenger just so I could have a cooldown, though. Um, I run Hour of Mercy because I'm a meter padding whore. Um, next up, this row doesn't really matter. I take, for this row, I take Rule of Law. The reason for this is it increases the range of your heals and reach of your master by 50%. This works on Light of Dawn. The Light of Dawn goes from a 15 yard conal range to like a 22.5 yard range. And what happens with cones is it flares out towards the end. So when you increase this rule of law, it really increases the maximum area that your, your uh, cone affects. Like it's not just like a 50% increase, it's like more than double because it's, it's just how the game works. It's hard to explain. But yeah, rule of law is almost a must. Uh, obviously, if you really, really, really need the movement, you can take the cavalier. Um, this you would okay if you had a light of martyr build, you would actually take unbreakable spirit, so you could reduce the um, the, the the cooldown on your divine protection. Because if you're playing light of the martyr, you're taking all this damage, so you actually want to have really high uptime on your divine protection. So you're not taking as much damage, but we're not playing that build. We're playing the light of dawn, holy shock build with divine purpose. So you're gonna want rule of law. Now, the last one was fun. Um, this is not even in the running. This is a fairly efficient spell. It's pretty decent. And Crusader's Might. This talent right here, man, let me tell you. I did so much theory crafting on this talent. I have like a paragraph written here, essentially. Um, but it, it ends up being about a 4 to 4.8 to 23% HPS increase, depending on how long you can attack the boss. Uh, it reduces the cooldown of your Light of Dawn and Holy Shock so much that I found it absolutely mandatory on, on any boss that you can use it on. It's insane. If you can't run Crusader's Might, then you could do the Bestow Faith. But let me tell you, when you put Crusader's Might into this, the amount of Light of Dawn's Holy Shocks that you get from Divine Purpose and Crusader's Might are insane. It's insane. It's so much fun. Uh, when you take these three talents right here, I average like a 40% uptime on Wings. Wings, like the, one of the strongest cooldowns in the game. It is an absolute blast. So what does this all mean? Well, and when you factor in all of these talents, this is kind of the end results, right? Um, wait, is this the right one? I believe it is. 
yeah, so this is including mastery, your talents, uh, some haste, right? So, so you look over here, and so look what happens to the cooldown of Holy Shock. So with haste, it starts, or it starts at nine. With haste, it goes to seven point five, and because of Crusader's strike, it goes to four point seven five. So we've basically cut the cooldown in half. But uh, Dawn starts at twelve. Haste goes to ten. After Crusader strike goes to seven. Like so, you've got a four point seven second ability and a seven second ability that you can spam twenty four seven. And they cost a little bit that you won't really go oom. And then you have Divine Purpose, so they'll be proccing all the time. Uh, if you look at the man efficiency over here, you'll notice, look at Holy Shock, 253. Light of the Dawn, 245. That's a very high efficiency number. Whereas, like, Holy Light's only at 107. And e Flash of Light, even with Infusion of Light, with your, with your passive proc is only at 79. Um, and then Martyr's coming in at 68. So, essentially, these two spells are king. You don't really want to cast anything else. Obviously, you're going to have to, though. So, we suggested essentially casting Holy Light because it's a lot more efficient than Flash of Flash Shield. So, every Infusion of Light proc, as long as you don't have another cooldown up, you would cast a quick Holy Light. And since you're going to be spamming, you're going to want a lot of haste with this build. I'd probably say about 25%. And you're going to want a lot of Mountain Dew. That's definitely going to help you. Yeah, it's going to be mandatory. But, yeah. Uh, we'll probably put this in the description. There was a lot of good math that I did here. Uh, and honestly, I couldn't, I couldn't, oh, we don't have enough time in this video to explain it all. But trust me, uh, I spent a lot of time making sure that these numbers were right. And that uh, what I was about to give out, uh, it was solid advice. Because I think I'm probably going to be maining Holy Paladin. And if I want to be the best in the world, I need to make sure my, my theory crafting is good. So what does this all mean? Well, I think I have that over here. <laughs> I believe this is the amount of spells you should expect to cast in this mode. Uh, you're going to be getting out about 51 Light of Dawn, 75 Holy Shocks. Uh, discount that because we're not casting, casting Beacon of Virtue. Um, the Holy Lights, that basically is going to be your filler, so I left that blank. Um, and then I factored in if you were casting Bestow Faith or a Judgment of Light. So that the Judgment of Light is up to you. But... Essentially, the rotation is going to be uh, Light of Dawn and Holy Shock on cooldown, obviously. And then when there's when there's nothing to press, you just Crusader's Might to get them back off cooldown. It's an incredibly spammy f um, build. And there's going to be a lot of overhealing, but it's, it's a lot of fun, let me tell you. You want to try to use your Holy Shocks on the range, because you're pretty much going to solo heal the melee with Light of Dawns. Like you're gonna get so many light of dawns, and you're gonna get you're gonna use your holy shock and your infusion of light, uh, holy holy light heals to heal the ranged, and, uh, and, in, and when nothing's up, you're just gonna crusaders might on the boss. I wish I could show you a video, maybe we can get one later, but it's a very fun play style, and um, you literally don't go oom, um. you never go oom, um. and I was pulling really high at raw HPS, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. But yeah, uh, that's it for me, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash lightxwater. Um, I'll be definitely be streaming all the time, coming here pretty soon, testing out these healers. Um, yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.